I'm, am I pronouncing your your name in the right way with Gertz, or is it is it some something a bit different? It's uh, it's ninety nine percent perfect. So, what will be the hundred percent correct pronunciation? We have this uh, soft G, and uh, and then the correct one would be Dirts. Dirts. Okay. Yes, exactly. Now it's hundred percent. Okay. Well, that's well. The funny thing is, um, so even though the Netherlands is a small country, we've got a distinction between the southern and the northern and the northern parts, where the northern parts can't pronounce a soft G, whereas we in the south we can. So Dirts is something that it's very natural for us and, oh, I, nice. Nice. and I actually so <laughs> just to let you in on a little secret so what I've did what I've done beforehand is I've googled so how do you pronounce the name Jirs? and I'm like <laughs> and I found just one site and it pronounced it very almost American like goods and I'm like well that doesn't sound anything like I've so uh, my, my exposure to the Latvian language is, of course, very limited. But from all the things that I've heard previously, I was like, well, I, I, I can't believe they would just pronounce it Gertz. And then the Gertz is, of course, much more, well, fitting, I would say. <laughs> yeah, it's much more Latvian like. Um... <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. So, well, <laughs> and the one beautiful thing is we're at the top of the hour and we're ready to go. Are you okay? Everything uh, yes, set sure. set in. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So the audio. So, but, uh, yeah. There is there is no video, correct? No, that, that's uh, that's right. Mm. So we've been trying to um, to push uh, Discord to uh, to also include video on these yeah. um, on these stages that they've done. Um, so we it's always that bit of a well, whatever you want to. What, what, how, it's always a bit of a catch-22 right where okay well you can do video but then you don't have the audience interaction um, and I personally always think that the one thing that I know that the audience likes is that that interaction uh, because otherwise we could have done something like a, a zoom call or a teams call where we would have just video and just the two of us interacting and then just maybe more well, me <laughs> reading out some questions from uh, from the people out there uh, but this is actually a great segue into for those of well like like yourself just uh, the first time joining this show is let me just let me just open this up and let me just explain how we um, how we typically do these things so uh, welcome everyone this is the modular clubhouse and this is something that has been in the making for well, uh, several months already, right, Jude? That we've been trying to, well, uh, set up a date for um, for this meeting, and I'm so happy that you uh, that you joined us. So, first question is, of course, how is Tuna doing? Uh, he's uh, next to me, actually, here because I'm <laughs> at my place, and uh, and uh, if we would have. Uh, speakers on then uh, he would definitely intervene with, uh, with his uh, his opinion <laughs> oh that's great that's great yeah. that is of course just the well the legend that tuna is is of course something that we all that we all can agree on is something of the well the reason why people gravitate towards uh, erica since i would say <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's full time member of Erica Sins, and um, and uh, I'm so happy he joined us. And <laughs> <laughs> so then the question is, how much do you have to pay him on a daily basis? Is it just um, cold heart currency, or is it just catnips here and there? Well, it's uh, lots of love, but he gives it back, and uh, mm -hmm. and then. Um, I personally prepare a meal for him. You know, I cut uh, some uh, beef heart in oh, small nice. pieces. And yeah. So, and he does not get uh, any canned food because I do not find it uh, good enough. <laughs> well, and especially for such a valued um, 
well part of your company i can uh, i can understand that <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, so let me just explain a bit what we're going to do here is uh, we've got um we've got this channel where we are talking right now and next to that we have the so-called companion channel and mm -hmm. um you already start to see well some uh, some interaction happening there um, so what we'll probably do is just for the first 30 minutes um, we, I'm just going to do a, a very well, laid back interesting and hopefully entertaining interview and then after that I want to open it up uh, for the for the audience as well uh, where they might have well, more intelligent questions than I have um, and then we can just see well how deep the rabbit hole goes um, so I'll be keeping an eye on the companion channel because sometimes uh, not everyone is able or willing to join us on stage to do an actual question live. But we then have the well the option to just do that in the companion channel. Mm -hmm. I do want to for for everyone listening in live. I do want to remind everyone to uh, keep the rules in place. Um, and as always, uh, well. The most important rule is don't be a jerk. Uh, so no racism, bigotry, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, etc. Um, that's not something that we are going to tolerate here. I just want to uh, re-emphasize that for now. Um, and of course, well, if in doubt, uh, just let me know if you uh, if you want to ask something. So, Gertz, uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, for making the time. And I, I'm I'm fully aware that it's eleven a clock already for you right yeah but it's uh, not my birthday which was the case uh, last time we tried yeah. to schedule this. <laughs> indeed so apologies <laughs> for that that is absolutely no, it's okay that was well, I, my I was, fault yeah. because yeah i overestimated uh, my um, my capabilities to join <laughs> right my, after my birthday <laughs> well and may maybe then we would have had a very interesting call who knows no but again and, and thanks so much for 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 elisa to uh to set all of this up uh she's been a she's been a, a a true warrior in in supporting me and the channel going forward so again before i forget uh say hi to uh to her for me and thank her for all her support and um well, as said, so let's get get to know you a bit better. So, um, a couple of things I'm always interested in. So, if I were to go back to little Jert's, uh, well, growing up, what was music like for you? What was what kind of role played music in your life growing up? I discovered some music actually quite late because when mm -hmm. uh, where i grew up it was uh, a small village um like 200 kilometers from riga okay. and uh, and uh, here in latvia everything happens in riga you know? yeah yeah <laughs> almost everything <laughs> and um and um yeah till my mid teenage years i actually did not consume any music almost uh, almost any music at all oh wow but um but then um my uh <laughs> as you can hear tuna is starting yeah to i just say wanted to say <laughs> hey I hear, I hear a familiar voice there <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, my uncle uh he had uh, like uh, very very like say not difficult but uh, but I, I, we were living in con uh, we were living in collective farm so uh, my uncle was a driver there but uh, yeah. when he was like 24 or something he was drink driving motorcycle and broke his black backbone and oh, wow. uh, he, uh, yeah his uh, his uh, legs were par paralyzed for the rest of his life oh sorry but uh, then then he like changed his life radically so he started studies in uh, in uh, academy of music in uh, moscow remotely yeah. and uh, he got some uh, some synthesizers and then uh, then uh, he had some he started to get into music so it was 
kind of Latvian pop songs or something, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and uh, I, as a teenager, saw those synthesizers. Of course, I, I had some, those are not synthesizers, actually, because in uh, in Latvia, there were very few synthesizers. Mostly those were uh, electric organs. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, and uh, I was, I kind of showed an interest in those. And um, and yeah, and then he, uh, because I, I was like, I studied in school and, uh, and um, there were some shows on radio about, uh, music from abroad because you know there was iron curtain and i, I yeah. we did not have really proper access to music and uh, i asked him to record those uh, those shows you know, on uh, real to real recorders and uh, i got into classical rock music because that was kind of legal <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so what 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 year are we talking here? Uh, you growing We're talking up? Uh, like uh, 1985, 1980, yeah, something like that. Oh wow! Yeah, and then the, cla the and by classic rock you mean uh, well, like uh, Led Zeppelin, Pink uh, Pink Floyd, some Deep Purple. Oh, nice. Like that. So not not, yeah. not all the way back to the Stones, I would say, but yeah, but still very yeah, yeah, compelling, yeah. Yeah. progressive rock music back back at the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And um, yeah, then I got into DIY electronics mm -hmm. by uh, borrowing a book in my physics class um, library. Yeah, because you you studied you studied physics, right? Yeah, that was uh, that was I became physics teacher. Yeah, well, that's uh, something. That's highly... one thing we we have in common because I I studied physics and astrophysics here as well. Uh, never oh, finished nice. it, of course, but yeah, it's still I um, it's still one of my my interests. It's always great to meet a, a kindred spirit of sorts. <laughs> yeah, I was actually when in uh, secondary school uh, I was highly inspired by physics teacher there. Okay. He was kind of non-conform, non-conformist teacher by that by those times, and so, mm -hmm. and uh, I decided to become a teacher myself, and then I actually worked for uh, four or five years in uh, in school, and, and in certain periods of time, actually, I was working in three schools simultaneously, including oh, wow. International School of Latvia. <laughs> Yeah, but at but, that time uh, you already moved to Riga. I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then um, but, one one quick question about when you said, well, growing up, that wasn't real access to music, but um, your parents didn't play or sing or uh, no, not or, at all. They, not at all. Uh, okay, wow. that was co that was collective farm, and you know people were really down to earth there. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so zero interest in music, zero encouragement to to do that, you know. <laughs> and uh, and um, yeah, yeah, even you know when I got into DIY electronics, so they they totally did not get that, and um, and um, and they were actually sometimes openly laughing on what I'm doing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, would I be right in then? assuming that they see um, music or anything creative more as something that's not uh, adding value for them? Or how do they, they respond they to that? They did not care much, actually. And, okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm the uh, oldest eldest uh, son in family, you know. We are, yeah. uh, four, uh, uh, we are three brothers and, uh, and a sister. So uh, yeah, as I was pretty good at uh, at school, so um, they quickly left me alone, you know. And and, <laughs> and when I was at my sixteen, I moved uh, I moved uh, to to town to study in secondary school. So I actually I started to live on my own uh, when I was sixteen. So. That's quite and young, I'm, right? In, in that, yeah, in that sense, I'm very grateful to my uh, parents that, uh, on one hand, they did not encourage me and did not try to 
lead me somewhere you know so they uh, mm -hmm. allowed me to make me my own decisions and uh and yeah, yeah they left me alone <laughs> no but still given given their uh probably their their convictions living in a well as you say as a, in a communal farm um then to let your eldest son well go and find their own way at 16 that is quite a that, that that's quite a big vote of confidence because of course at the same time they might have also thought well hey here we've got a a young healthy boy of 16 uh, we could all we could also use him on the farm right and then to just say well please go and, and make sure that you use your gift um, from an academical perspective that's quite <laughs> that, that's that's quite a, a big step I would assume yeah but uh, yeah i almost became a construction worker <laughs> because that was what i was doing uh, during summers on collective farm and so but, uh, but okay yeah, wow <laughs> but yeah then um somehow somehow yeah, i decided to go to secondary school and then ended up uh, becoming physics teacher you know <laughs> and, and what, what was it in physics that that drew you towards physics what was the the main interest that you had at that at that time i mean i was uh, i was very much into diy electronics already I was right yeah. already yeah since uh, like early teenage years so it, I, it was like i was 14 or uh, or even 13 when i when i got that book and uh, started building things and uh, during when i was studying in secondary school i part my particular interest in DIY electronics was uh, electronic music instruments. So I was making uh, stone boxes or FX uh, pedals for guitars. And and in secondary school, we decided to make a punk rock group. So <laughs> I actually built a guitar from scratch, just using very basic tools and stuff. And and awesome. we had. We had a couple of performances with uh, with this punk rock group, <laughs> including one uh, during our uh, uh, pre graduation uh, event where um, where we performed uh, kind of very popular folk song in uh, punk rock treatment, and uh, and awesome. everybody was so much pissed off that. <laughs> <laughs> and we we went off stage triumphant you know because of course because that that's that what you do point. right yeah <laughs> yes. oh perfect and you don't want to know how many people within the modular realm have something like a punk rock or a even a heavy metal background and the story you just told about um, that graduation ceremony um, I've actually had a similar experience where where I was uh, in a in a well actually a black metal band at that time and when we had the grand reopening of our new secondary school uh, building for whatever reason they asked us to play and there was literal blood on the floor from people in the pits and people just stage diving and the teachers didn't know what happened so I but then this is in my case that was 20 well that was 2002 but then in your case I'm, I'm assuming we're now talking um late 80s early 90s in yeah, it, it in, was, in, in, uh, in, in soviet uh influenced uh latvia of course yeah exactly it was uh 1989 yeah wow uh, well and that was actually a actual graduate it was not a club it was a a uh, huge ceremony in uh, in a hall in uh, of the school and everybody were were was wearing like suits and and you know those no way oh wow dresses and so, so yeah that was that was that kind of performance <laughs> do you know if anything of that was recorded back then or i doubt so yeah. maybe but but uh, those recordings are definitely lost <laughs> i can imagine so uh, at that time what, what, what were a couple of the the musical influences that that, that brought you to that point uh, you know after this uh, you know this uh, art rock thing and uh, and mm -hmm. um, and which uh, what i was listening and uh, 
on uh, when studying uh, when in secondary school uh, I for first time I heard Sex Pistols and that like totally blew my mind off you know? of course yeah <laughs> and I said yeah. so well, this is uh, this is direction to go and then uh, awesome. Zig Zig Sputnik then Zig Zig Sputnik again was like different angle how you can treat music like more electronically and so on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that was it in my uh, musical career, which was which was a couple of performances, and then we graduated, and just this punk rock group band never happened. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but still, it, it is a story you have fond memories of, of course. No, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and that is, uh, and 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 to what kind of. Um, level is that almost punk approach and not necessarily punk rock but more the punk approach which is of course very diy very uh, very garage very well a bootstrapped approach uh, do you think that that is something that is inherently a part of of, of modular uh, going forward not necessarily that was mm-hmm. so long ago and uh, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, see, you know, like everything with what you experience or uh, or uh, go through, kind of, in a way, shapes your uh, point of view, and and so. But but you know, thirty years have passed since then. And <laughs> since then, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. But then, but then again, one of the well, um, I've, I've of course done a bit of homework before this actual call, and um, one of the most iconic pictures uh, I could find of you uh, with within interviews is is of you sporting a motorhead shirt as well. So I'm like, well, actually, there I, is I a, put yeah, it, yeah, I put it on uh, today, and uh, because I thought there will be video, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it is. It, it is a part of that of that overall view that we as as mere mortals have of jits at at, at, at erica since is that something that uh, has, actually yeah. i um, very much admire uh lemmy kilmister as a person and mm-hmm. uh, i quite enjoy also uh, their music mm-hmm. and uh, that was actually an interesting story that um um we are uh, we are about to start a crowdfunding campaign to set up uh, a monument for Lemmy Kilmister in Riga. We have everything prepared, but unfortunately, uh, war in, in Ukraine yeah. uh, like prior- prioritized uh, other things, and uh, now we run this uh, campaign to support um, humanitarian uh, initiatives uh, in Ukraine. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, um, Lemmy was uh, a great, a very honest, modest, and true person. And uh, I guess if if more people would be like him, you know, <laughs> world would be better place. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, and, uh, if everyone was like Lemmy, we would just tell each other the truth and then. Um, exactly. Maybe maybe have a fight and then drink a beer afterwards, and all the problems would would just go away. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, uh, yeah and to continue on this story, uh, um, there was a case uh, a couple of years ago when uh, uh, accidentally Igor Cavalera from Sepultura appeared with his wife uh, Lima, who has Latvian roots. It appears, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, but they are from Brazil. Uh, yeah. They appeared in our office, and uh, and I was uh, accidentally wearing that uh, T-shirt. Oh and wow! Then, uh, yeah. Afterwards, Igor sent me a, a pendant um, with uh, in the shape of this motorhead uh, skull, which uh, Lemmy Kilmister gave him as a gift. And <laughs> oh wow! So, yeah. So I have a, I have a. a a piece of jewelry which which is uh, from which belonged to lemmy at, yeah, at that time yeah. oh wow <laughs> so what but then i have to ask the question 
So how did Igor Cavalera, of all people, who is probably one of the most influential uh, percussionists in, 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 in well, well, periods, he, he has been, um, yeah, he's been one of the most influential percussionists, periods. So how did he end up at the Erika Sin's office then? Um, because uh, his wife was invited to do some performances in uh, in Riga. So a friend of mine who is Italian promoter who lives in uh, in uh, Latvia. So oh, okay. In Riga. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the, he invited his wife. And uh, Igor actually now has uh, at. Um, a couple of uh, other projects. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, one is is Pet Brick, uh, where he uh, that's his duo uh, with uh, synthesizers and uh, him on drums. Absolutely great and very very uh, for me it's uh, extremely inspiring, uh, you know, inspiring music what they make. It's definitely worth checking out. So Pedbrick, and then he also has collaboration with uh, Brazilian, uh, um, not, it's like experimental rock band uh, Deaf Kids. Uh, I did not so, know that. And I, I yeah, knew. I thought please, I knew everything about yeah. metal, but no, apparently not. <laughs> please check it out. That's not. Uh, it's not metal at all. That's uh, kind of mesh up with. Uh, Synthesizers, uh, Igor on drums, and uh, and um, yeah, highly yeah, pet brick. Yeah, I've just, and, I just I just found it perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna. So I I've got some homework to do later on. Perfect. Awesome. So then, as you said, well, um, his yeah, wife Lima they, yeah, was. Uh, yeah, indeed, they were yeah. Uh, they were in. Uh, uh, this promoter Mark, uh, he bring them uh, because you know if somebody mm -hmm. who is in uh, in uh, electronic music and synthesizers comes to Riga, then uh, definitely they uh, stop by in our office. Okay. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, we met there and we became good friends afterwards. Oh wow! And now I see also the the Belgian connection there with Soul Wax as well, where you've got actually well, uh, Igor and uh, uh, Lima also being well collaborating with uh, with Soul Wax, who are yes, a, yes, yes. Uh, uh, a Belgian well they're brothers and they they do all kinds of things uh, electronically, but also just generic music production so okay I'm, I'm learning so much uh yes this this is great absolutely oh yeah um so for anyone who's asking currently yes this is all being recorded and this will be posted to the uh youtube channel later on oh wow these these are great stories to uh to listen to so one of the things i then learned is when you you've always been into electronic well diy approaches where you've been building your own electronic circuitry and all and all of that and i believe i've seen an interview with you where you said it was actually uh your son who then inspired you to well get back into that but then also start to dive into synthesizers could you could you tell us a bit mm. more about how that had then happened and how that then brought mm -hmm. into this whole well journey that you are still <laughs> making a lot of waves with yeah um early 90s uh, when uh, we you know, Latvia gained independence and kind of markets opened uh, I somehow lost interest in uh, L DIY electronics because all of a sudden you know you could buy things you know if yeah. you had some money and uh, and I more switched to to motorcycles I started building motorcycles and uh, and modifying them and so and um like <laughs> more than 10 years ago uh, my son was like eight or something mm -hmm. uh, and uh, i decided i need to make him a con electronic constructor to explain how electronic circuits work how how, uh, how 
you know you can build them how you understand like voltage and current things and stuff so uh, what i did i built uh, i soldered small boxes with uh, with individual electronic components on them like uh, if somebody has got a uh, uh, patch and tweak book there is a photo yeah. of this that constructor and um yeah so uh, i just uh, i just uh, kept bu uh, building those small boxes and uh, ended up with like over 20 uh, of different boxes like one with switch one with uh, three position rotary switch then another with uh, with led then i realized i need something that makes sound and then then uh, i built some very rudimentary um, oscillator which just beeped and then I started <laughs> to search uh, you know maybe there is something that makes more musical sounds and uh, I, then I realized that uh, internet opens up mm -hmm. such a huge access to to DIY music electronics you know because back in uh, in my teenage years and when I started in electronics, uh, there was no internet, there was no access mm -hmm. to Western uh, electro notes or uh, whatever, like um, magazines or uh, or public uh, yeah information you had. So I uh, subscribed for uh, two uh, Russian um, magazines. Yeah, uh, one was radio, which was more about uh, radio transmitters and all this radio transmission receiving sports and stuff. But there was uh, in every of the, and on computers DIY computer. Actually, I built a DIY uh, laptop, no, not laptop, but computer, and um, and uh, there was a section about DIY instruments as well. Oh, but nice. it was qu quite limited. And uh, and I was really waiting for every issue to to <laughs> be in my mailbox, you know, <laughs> impatiently, so I can check out what's what's there. But uh, but yeah, and then uh, all of a sudden, you know, I uh, I came across uh, um, like huge information on uh, on DIY electronics, uh, particularly music from outer space. I built literally everything uh, Ray Wilson had, and then uh, he once uh, wrote me an email. He said, Gertz, you built m entire my site, so now I have to invent <laughs> something new. <laughs> That's probably like the biggest praise there is, right? Oh, perfect. Yeah. Oh, and there is, a, there is a book uh, by uh, Ray Wilson on, the, on the DIY music instruments musical instruments and uh, there is a he asked me to send a photo of sequence of his sequencer which i made but i like did a lot of a uh, lot of uh, and the modification there also i included midi and and stuff so yeah that was uh, that was quite a journey you know how i began Awesome. How they got into, but still, his um, his book like um, make and those kind of books are still the the de facto bibles for anything that has to do with well with, with DIY well electronic music production, right? There, yeah. there, of course, there's a little been written about that afterwards, but still, that is the that's the basis. Yeah. yeah. And uh, maybe you have noticed, uh, now we have a, a collaboration with uh, Moritz Klein on, um, yeah. on um, uh, DIY module line. On the so EDU each, uh, line, yeah. Yeah, and uh, each, uh, each uh, manual is like 60 pages. <laughs> so uh, our uh, aim actually is to publish a book by the end of the year. So with, with the... Oh. all those yeah with all those steps we make in uh, in building individual modules so we will consolidate all um all um 
manuals and uh, and publish it as a book. So all of the manuals that are now currently being shipped with the whole Edu line, yes, yes, you'll then exactly. just package them all up into one single bound edition. Oh wow, that's yeah. great! But uh, of course, uh, they will be more extensive, uh, not just not just a collection of manuals, but that will be like with uh, with more uh, kind of broader view on uh, on uh, DIY electronics. Yeah. No, but still, from uh, and, and to be absolutely uh, honest, I haven't uh, I haven't had the chance to look into the, the the build manuals myself. But from what I've been told and what I've seen uh, from others is that these are really stepping people through. Okay, well, these are the basics. This is the theory you have to understand. And almost as 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 you coming from a well physics as educational background really stepping into that role again and really making sure that people understand well this is what's happening on an electronic level this is how the electrons flow this is how it then evolves into this well beautiful sound you then hear and i think that that is of course one of the things that we we can all benefit from yeah absolutely that's an intention <laughs> mm. awesome and i'm just I'm just eating up all of the the people with uh, with the right skill set that are then able to uh, to follow along. Uh, people like uh, like uh, uh, Robin Vincent, um, but also others who are then just taking their time and really making sure that that's then being spread even further beyond the people that are then able to well get their hands on these modules. But just sharing that knowledge, it's it's just great to see that. Yeah, awesome. and uh, I was uh, I was surprised myself, you know, how how good, uh, how well this uh, project was uh, perce uh, perceived, or, uh, mm -hmm. or how many actually are uh, are building those kits and stuff. And it was like way way beyond what I expected, actually. Okay. Because you thought that people said, okay, well, this is something that um, that's going to be for a niche, but I, yeah, might be. Uh, I mean, you know, if you have a, if you launch a module and uh, you can sell like uh, 500 a month, that's, yeah. uh, that's quite an achievement nowadays. But, uh, but those DIY kits, you know, they are, uh, they are, much 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 more uh <laughs> popular you know so yeah they are i guess they are best sellers nowadays like like uh mutable instruments used to be <laughs> yeah well in certain cases mutable instruments still is of course but yeah if you can get your hands on them <laughs> mm. no but still i from a and i've been i've been really hesitant uh, when it comes to DIY, uh, and that's mainly because I, I'm still convinced that I've I've been blessed with two left hands, um, but it's always something, and I think I speak on behalf of the whole modular community, is that that almost uh, fundamental understanding of electronics, the fundamental understanding of uh, of sound design. Uh, that's what draws people into modular and then of course the well the next logical step is to also start building it yourself so i would actually say then with the with the effort and the attention de to detail that these edu modules have been released where you actually just take people by the hand and just guide them through this journey i think that that's something where we might see other people stepping up at a later at a later point where they say okay well this is what i've learned and this is how i want to build upon that so yeah. you are actually with that with that whole edu range uh lining up well maybe even your biggest competitor going forward but also a whole new generation of modular designers perhaps yeah exactly and not uh, not modular only because you know it by accident i became uh I established a 
uh, company that makes electronic that develops uh, electronic music instruments but uh, mm -hmm. but perhaps if some teenager comes across those projects and and builds some instruments but uh, but uh, he decides to study electronics and uh, and you know that in mm -hmm. EU at the moment uh, we have a uh, hundred thousand engineers uh, miss, not missing but uh, it is a deficit of uh, of uh, terrible deficit of engineers Absolutely. that yeah. can do things not specifically in electronics but uh, you know in any other area you know? so these uh, these stem uh, mines uh, are actually very much needed and uh, if you are a parent then uh, then the wisest decision for <laughs> guiding your child into some uh, direction would be let them become engineer you know <laughs> absolutely <laughs> you will be... in, in in whatever shape or form because yeah, as you exactly. said uh, that whole notion of having a grasp of engineering basics whether it's computer engineering, electronic engineering, physical engineering, um, that is something that I've always been quite blessed with. That, that that's something that I've been exposed to from the start. Uh, mm. But I'm just looking at, hey, well, what's that electronics book I really loved? And that's the 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 art of electronics by um, uh, by Horowitz. And that is something that really instilled a lot of things for me as well paul horowitz um, i'm not sure if you've i'm not uh, even sure if you've had I, access I, I to that it, yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. it's a beautiful thing it's 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 really well it's more of a reference thing for me than an actual guide but still if i'm in doubt if i want to understand something a bit better that's my go-to point and ever since i started doing more electronic music or uh, modular and synthesizers I've come to revere that in a very newfound respect. And I think that that's, as you said, well, that's something that we need to inspire the younger generation with. Yeah, sure. And that's actually intention with those, uh, with those pro no, edu, uh, edu DIY pro no, kits. You know. mm -hmm. But then there is, there is one part where I'm, I'm really interested in. When you started to build those first couple of well building blocks for your for your son, how did that then evolve into? Hey, well, I might make a business out of this. I, I might want to start a company and call it Erica Since. So I, I'm I'm really interested to get a a better understanding of that as well. That's also was kind of intentional accident or something <laughs> I, I i i i built literary almost liter all projects which were online like 10 years yeah. ago <laughs> and wow. uh, and accidentally i came across uh, a polyvox filter diy polyvox filter yeah. thing uh, from one french uh, designer uh, he had several projects, so I built a Polyvox filter, and I, I was kind of disappointed because uh, it it did not meet my expectations on how Polyvox filter should sound. But it was uh, it was uh, developed based on uh, on uh, op amps uh, which were available in West, so there mm -hmm. were no original op amps. So. Ah. I searched out original schematics, compared it uh, with uh, with one I built. I uh, found out what uh, what uh, op amps uh, were in uh, actual field. These are programmable op amps. Yeah. Uh, some may make a workaround and uh, and use uh, LM thirteen seven hundred op amps, but. Uh, but um, yeah, I found those. Uh, we in Riga we have a open market of electronic. Still, we have open market of electronic uh, components. So oh, still, go, even today. Yes. Oh wow. Yes. Yeah, you can go and there is, there are 
small booths which are not heat booths which are not heated so during the winter they you know, people are extending their having some vodka to get warm you know <laughs> and, so, and uh, you can buy things you know? uh jan william from uh from ginkgo synthesis was yeah. uh in uh in riga because he performed in uh, our contactor festival a couple of years ago and uh he went to that open market and bought a bunch of uh of uh, weird things for uh paul tuss from error instruments because oh yeah paul he's assembling like crazy <laughs> instruments and he's really interested in uh in some some uh artifacts from uh from whatever electronic things you know um, so yes if and, you uh, find something that is something that you can cannot find any 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 place or any time else you know for a fact that paul will be very interested in those kind of things exactly exactly uh, he's a great guy so, oh i, I yeah. love the guy to pieces absolutely yeah so uh i went to this market and uh found those op amps there was a guy who was selling them and I asked, well, how much do you have them? He had, well, I have uh, almost infinite stock, you know. So I, uh, I just I made uh, my interpretation of uh, of Polyvox filter in form mm -hmm. of, uh, of a DIY module. It sounded good. So uh, it was kind of encouragement for me that, uh, well, I can make it uh, as a DIY project uh, and uh, available for uh, for others. So I uh, open thread in uh, in uh, Muffigler. Yeah. And um, and uh, all of a sudden, like orders started to pour in. So it was really really successful project. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, a guy who had infinite stock of op amps. Uh, oh yeah, his stock ran out in three months. You know, no way. But that's not <laughs> yes. the TS two seven one, right? Uh, no, no, those uh, op amps are uh, K um, one hundred forty UD twelve. And um, okay, and so then... the, yeah, so the TS two seventy one would have been the. Well, the Western knockoffs, you might say. Yeah, possibly. But yeah, actually, yeah. I do not recall what are uh, these yeah, Western okay. uh, things. But then it appeared that uh, Factory Alpha here in Riga actually still makes those uh, those op amps. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and um, so I got in touch with Alpha. Now they are making uh, almost half of all our uh, modules and instruments. We have three factories uh, actually mm -hmm. producing our instruments. So Alpha is uh, one of them making about half of those. And um, yes, uh, my business did not go bankrupt because uh, <laughs> you know, those chips uh, were made in Riga actually. And then, uh, as our business grew, Alpha saw the potential in uh, in uh, developing new chips uh, for uh, specifically for electronic uh, music instruments. And now they have a line of uh, twenty uh, application-specific uh, chips. So some say they make those CM clones, but they are not clones. They actually take the functionality of the chip and uh, and make it perfect because CM uh, things they were made actually on a, mm -hmm. on a, on a prefabricated matrix chip matrices so yeah. they were not developed from scratch and therefore they had some drawbacks uh, some performance issues and so so yeah alpha nowadays uh, are is offering like 20 different application specific chips mm -hmm. specifically for electronic music instruments and not yeah. only of course no but that that's so, our, yeah. so that that their website is rdalpha.eu right um in, in riga so at least I'm, I'm trying to to, to to follow along and make sure that i can i can share that so where so this is on yeah, the uh, uh briefly bus yellow yes 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 yeah, exactly okay. exactly yeah. um, Mm. They their website is 
bit old schoolish and I tried to convince them to, to make the, <laughs> uh, the better one. And uh, actually a friend of mine I introduced uh, who is in uh, web design and so he actually made the uh, better version of Alpha website, but then it appeared that uh, their server is uh, does not accept websites which are made in uh, in that particular uh, software oh <laughs> you know <laughs> and um, somehow they are they do they do not have motivation enough to change the website <laughs> but that's always the case right you need to have a business yeah. case before you can actually invest into changing this and when i look yeah, at but, that, uh, when, when a website see, it's 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 very lightweight it's very efficient and it gets yeah. the message across right yeah mm. But, uh, you know, as per my experience, um, you know, I spent, uh, before Erika since I spent 20 years in marketing and I was running an advertising agency last 10 years. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what advertising does is trying to make uh, uh, shitty products look better and <laughs> good products look <laughs> exceptional and so yeah. and. And uh, what we do in Erika since we actually go against this marketing wisdom because really our instruments speak themselves. So actually we did not, we have not invested uh, a cent in uh, advertising we bought. You know, we of course yeah. we we pay sometimes to demoers who do like for YouTubers who do like. Uh, brilliant work and and i know how much effort it takes to make a proper demo and so so mm -hmm. yes but that's kind of kind of exchange of energy how i treat yeah, it yeah but indeed. we, we almost never bought uh, any advertising in its classical form you know mm -hmm. so uh, yeah yeah but I, mm. I i have to believe that that is um that is, of course, quite true for the overall um, Eurorack, but maybe even beyond that, the overall synthesizer community. Because I, um, I've, I've, I've been doing this for a year now, and it's always been like, well, I want to invest my time into understanding and then presenting a, a module, but we always want to make sure that it's fair but it's all also something where you want to make sure I want to have the actual product, the actual module, the actual synthesizer, the actual piece of technology um, show its own value. And I think that that's something that you can't fake. You can't fake yeah, exactly. or you can't, you, can't, you can't make a synthesizer look or sound better than, it's, than, it, than it does, especially not in this community because people are gonna look at that they're gonna and they're gonna spit you out immediately if you do that once I, I, at least in my opinion exactly it's it's absolutely true and nowadays you know you cannot risk with basically any pro product because you know uh, the power of customer let's call it that uh, you know in our case it's musician or it's a person into m musical instruments, you know, he mm -hmm. has uh, unprecedented power uh, because of social networks, because of mm -hmm. what, how loud actually he can or she can speak out, you know, and uh, and that, that that was till like I guess ten years ago. That was yeah never a case in the entire history of world you know <laughs> that's you know the, the the voice of the consumer has become overly emphasized in that regard yeah. as well and exactly. then yeah it has a lot of benefits of course where you might make sure okay well we won't fall for overselling anymore uh, and that's of course a great thing so that 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 way you can always rest assured that if you have a look at a person demoing a synthesizer or a module or an instrument on on on, on youtube or on any other medium that you'll get the raw facts uh, but then of course there is so much out there and that's also something 
you can always find something to your liking if you want to have an understanding of how people use uh, for instance your system 3 in specific musical genre uh, X Y or Z you'll be able to find it as well yeah sure and you know again that youtuber can be paid you know that could be paid promotion course, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he he could hide some uh, some drawbacks of synthesizer possibly you know but that i am actually against it you know because yeah. you know if you need to be demo, fair then, right then yeah just yeah let's be fair and and that actually helps us and other manufacturers to develop better instruments because uh, mm -hmm. you, you can learn learn from mistakes and stuff well not necessarily but, uh, mistakes but of course well um so during my day job i worked for an american software company right and mm. i always tell people that i talk to out in the fields i tell them be absolutely brutally honest with me uh, because when we develop products we are in our ivory tower and we can only do that that which we think is best for the for the people that have to work with our software but again we are all blind we all have blind spots right and the only way how we can improve ourselves is if we get honest feedback and i think that that is true for for software developers i think that it's true for synthesizer builders like yourself uh, but also and that's something I, I want to be absolutely vocal about um, but that's also something that i need as a uh, as a content creator whether it's these kind of interviews or the videos that i create i need feedback because otherwise i'll never improve myself but that mindset saying well i i i applaud and i welcome and i actually encourage you to give feedback to me that is something that has absolutely changed over the course of the last 10 years where previously we all had to just accept what um software manufacturers instrument makers or maybe even even content creators um deemed right for us in the masses but nowadays when we all have the choice hey how do we want to consume the software or the services that we want the the musical instruments or the technology that we want to buy but also the content that we consume we need to listen we need to we need to improve ourselves and the people that won't listen and won't grow and develop themselves are the ones that are probably going to lose a lot of well, footprint over the course of the next couple of years yeah sure absolutely i totally agree and you know they like latvians are considered to be kind of shy and uh, introvert persons you know and uh, which i hate <laughs> and, and there are a lot a lot of cases when you know you maybe it's with others as well that you you meet someone and see if there is a for instance a, a stain on his coat for instance and mm -hmm. and you somehow do not tell that because you think well uh, it could offend him or how do you how he will feel about me or whatever you know but if you are his or her friend you know it's your duty to tell that <laughs> your enemy would not tell and then uh, you will and he will encourage you to do same mistakes, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and stuff. But uh, but uh, yes, two points. Ah, but that's a, that's a good your... point. Yeah. Uh, well, you might want to say, and that's of course because of the distances are being reduced. Where you might say, well, the whole world is not as far away as it was ten years ago. Where you might say, well, everyone that I meet whether it's online whether it's in person that distance that 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 metaphorical distance that we had previously that's gone especially now of course since covid and now that um we as a well uh, apologies for our our american listeners but i think that we have never felt as united as a european community um over the course of the last 30 years perhaps even currently right with everything that's happening in in in, in the ukraine but still mm. but this yeah. uh, globalization is actually 
that mm-hmm. is like brings us to points that no business actually is local because yeah. uh, even though you know you sell it sells things to local customers but uh, but uh, you source parts you know all over the globe and uh, that's a case with us that uh, yes we make things in Latvia and I'm really proud of doing that uh, when that, that little side note and when I started the company I uh, I was consulting uh, one Latvian startup which was like very very hype back then they were making drones which uh, follow athletes as a exercise like if you ride a, mm-hmm. a, a bmx uh, bike you know in in uh, in country or you do some windsurfing or stuff this drone yeah. was automatically following you nice so and yeah but they failed the product was not good <laughs> then but oh. they really they uh, went they did crowdfunding campaigns they they got like millions for development and so but they failed but the point was that they said it's when you make websites uh, you should do it uh, whatever the company name is dot com because dot lv nobody will trust you know <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, but uh, i had a like principle that uh, well no i i will do it to dot lv because i will make everything in latvia as as much as i can and and really i i can assure you that like every single piece of uh, instruments and even merchandising all our hoodies and t-shirts they are made yeah. in Latvia <laughs> and uh, and like the most uh, kind of significant sign that Latvia has cemented its uh, its uh, place in uh, global electronic music instruments manufacturing was last super booth where Gus Williams approached me and he said Dirts how comes that uh, Latvia has outperformed Great Britain in electronic music instruments (laughs) 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 oh Oh, that's awesome that's awesome but then again that's also a bit of well how can you make sure that you embrace your identity embrace where you're coming from and don't give a rat's ass of what other people tell you and make sure that you can indeed be on the one hand uh, proud of where you're coming from but at the same time understand well we are of course part of this global marketplace this global community this global tribe if you want and I think that that's something that is I think I think that the, the, the synthesizer community is a great example of that because I've been talking to, or well, currently we are of course talking, we are, uh, what is it like, at least 1100 kilometers uh, away from each other. Uh, uh, a week and a half ago, I was talking to Peter Young all the way over in, in Taiwan. Uh, but at the same time, I could have talks with people about synthesizers in South America, North America. But what brings us together is that love and that understanding and that or journey or goal of, of electronic music production and then of course we are just a very small ecosystem within the larger gro- global tribe but again it's just an example right and if we can use that to well to influence others yeah what's not to like yeah absolutely perfect so i do have to apologize we've already been talking for more than an hour and i promised you well mm. we're just going to do the interview for like an hour mm. like a, like 30 minutes and we're going to open it up for uh, for q a um mm. so apologies for that and i am cognizant that it's already past midnight for you um so what i'd like to do is i'd like to ask you two final questions and then i'm going to open it up for uh, for the audience um yeah. If you were to go back to young Jits uh, growing up at the communal farm, and if you were to give him one piece of advice, what would that be? Uh, 
don't listen to others you know who <laughs> who try to discourage you <laughs> awesome. i never did actually i, I no I, I did actually but uh, but uh, yeah maybe i did not uh, kind of treat their advices or or uh, discouragement to serious mm. or just yeah follow your path and follow your heart uh, maybe yeah, even yeah, yeah and of course you know i had like major detours detours uh, in uh, in my um, in my personal development in my career because yeah i was r running one of largest uh, advertising agencies in uh, in latvia yeah. but uh, but it appeared that there is the heart is not there you know it was a very nice experience and i gained a lot of uh, know how how to organize things you know how to communicate with people you know how to how to do large projects you know how to make things happen you know? yeah but, uh, and, and which helps a lot in uh, in uh, any other industry you work in but uh, but yes that's um if you have a vision then uh, then just do it <laughs> yeah but also that that also ties in nicely with one of the first things you mentioned during our interview is everything that you live through all the things that you've been exposed to all the things that you've done that will have formed you to be the person you are today with all of the the lessons you've learned right yeah correct sure absolutely and, and again that's, yeah that's you know you you cannot like i i really love this uh, buddhist approach that uh, only experience uh, gives you right to judge things or or to talk about them to to really um because then you can just comprehend them you know you you can read a book but if you, if this book if you do not uh, experience uh, things uh, from that book you know that does not matter because when you will meet real uh, real life people in such a circumstances you know you will you will you will do you will not have a practical means for uh, interaction or uh, yeah well, mm -hmm. whatever you call it and awesome. experience shapes yeah. you <laughs> that's a great point and i i've always been a a scholar of um of philosophy and 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 also religion just to understand religion as religion goes uh but i've i was unaware of this buddha's belief but i i, I can i can see its merits absolutely I'm gonna read up on that. I um, I see its value in there as well. Thanks, uh, you. It's, that, that's great. Um, and then of course my almost uh, famous last question is: I've had the the honor and the privilege to bombard you with questions and ask you quite personal questions as well. Uh, but I would do want to return the favor and. The question is then do you have any questions for me or is there anything that you would love to uh to understand from from where i am mm. you are uh, spending a lot of time and effort to uh, like making this happen what's your intention behind or what what's your mission how you feel you know what what why you are doing this that's a good question that's that's probably like the question even and i've um in, in, in earlier uh, episodes i've talked about the the journey i've had to bring me to this point but i think that the question you're asking right now is the one true question and I think that the reason why I want to organize these things, why I want to do these interviews, why I create these videos is um, on the one hand, it is a, it's a journey to 
enlightenment on the one hand it is a journey to knowledge uh, a journey to understanding and as i've always been quite a a student of science where i'm able to understand the the mechanics of things right so i understand how an oscillator works i understand how a filter works i understand how things on an electronic level or on a fundamental level how they work but the one thing i've never done is understand the mechanics of beauty or the understanding of aesthetics even so i've been up and i've been involved with music with art but always from a sidelines so i've been um, always supporting music I've been a great um, appreciator of music but I've never had that core understanding what makes music beautiful and as I am growing up and if and of course of course my kids have been a great inspiration there as well uh, where they ask the the most purest form of question is but why is this music beautiful and why is this more beautiful than this or why do you enjoy this piece more than that and i'm not looking for an answer to that question but i want to understand the aesthetics more and being a participant in music has always left me with um, a lot of enjoyment and a lot of um fulfillment you might even say but i've always had that longing to a better understanding of that and i think that this journey that i've embarked upon a year ago is hopefully leading me to the answer to that question so um again we're getting quite philosophical uh, yet uh, thanks <laughs> for that question yeah, so I, I, I haven't really answered the question but i I'm, 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 hopefully I've, I've, I've painted a picture of where I want to go with this mm -hmm. great appreciate that great um, so what I then want to do is I want to open it up for others who are either wanting willing or able to join on stage to ask any question uh, live and otherwise I'm going to keep an eye on the companion channel and I'll read any questions uh, on there as well we already received some questions throughout the interview so w let me just scroll up a bit and of course if you do want to join uh, on stage just raise your hand and I'll uh, I'll add you to it um, the first couple of questions uh, let's see mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then we have uh, here we go We get a lot of people who have also been students of physics and have been teaching there as well. Um, one question is, if you can recommend one must read book for us that for us that want to design our own modules, which one would that be? Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Perfect. Oh wow, that's great! <laughs> I mean, that's the, what, what I mean by that is that um, you know uh, any creative approach uh, it cannot be linear. You know, it it has to go into contradictions, to to paradoxes, and to to like first making things crazy and then uh, distilling it out to to user friendly thing but uh, but um, yeah um, like there are tens of thousand like 10,000 modules in uh, on uh, on modular grid you know and, oh yeah you know only creative ones or or perfectly designed ones stand out but uh, you cannot just 
step in someone someone's uh, steps you know and mm -hmm. try to try to do you know better or or like there has to be some disruption in module which you start to design and <laughs> therefore awesome. you know electronics will help you to put ideas uh, into 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 action but uh, first you need to have idea and then you have to turn it into this this hardware you know? yeah absolutely and then of course uh, yeah the, the whole alice in wonderland is of course one big allegory into well think how deep you can think what would you need how would you then encompass that and go out of your way to will leave the threatened parts and get into the the true undiscovered country absolutely exactly yeah so undiscovered country that's called in star trek even oh wow it's got to be one of those nights um <laughs> now we've got another question is um how did you and and of course the rest of erica since uh come about making the carbon cases and the comment here is it's a very interesting design what's your pro what's your design process like and well i have to agree the whole carbon case approach is of course one of the more disruptive things um in in your rack recently so how did that happen uh we all uh, actually i have a uh, um uh, when somebody joins erica since he has uh, he or she has to pass a uh, motorcycle driver's license <laughs> okay yeah, uh, yeah it's kind of compulsory thing <laughs> nice and uh and uh, and i have like uh at least 10 motorcycle helmets and i keep uh looking for the perfect one <laughs> and uh, you know because there are like really good ones uh, in terms of uh, how quiet they are you know when you wear them but then they are huge and then uh, you know mm -hmm. they uh, they are sometimes they look nice but they are not as far from comf being comfortable comfortable and so on but mm -hmm. uh, yeah recently there are uh, We've got some uh, carbon fiber helmets, and they are incredibly light. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. They're really, really yeah. so uh, as as <clears throat> as this year. I hope people will start to travel to gigs, you know, and stuff. And, Absolutely. Uh, we thought, yeah. well, we need to have the lightest uh, case, uh, modular synthesizer case. So let's make it carbon fiber, and. Um, we found a company who makes uh, like um, they make composite material things uh, like uh, uh, bobsleigh sledges. Uh, those. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, then for like uh, top world, uh, top athletes in the world. You know, mm -hmm. Then they make. Uh, then they make uh, those um, uh, boats for. Uh, like for sports and stuff you know and, and then both making a carbon fiber or in a fiberglass and, and they are really really good at that so uh yeah we we decided let's let's uh let's develop the lightest modular uh, synthesizer and uh, the most reliable modular synthesizer case uh we did some calculations and uh we said well this project is uh, like financially financially feasible so we started it, but when we got to the point that uh, all costs came together, we realized yeah. that that uh, uh, initial uh, initially estimated cost was uh, a fraction of what it actually was. So it, it actually doubled. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, and and therefore, yeah, those cases turned out extremely expensive. But we do not make almost uh like we make more money by selling a, a module compared to the carbon case. oh i can imagine yeah <laughs> yeah but uh but still you know as uh we have invested in technological process you know we need uh 
uh, like this molding form, which is cut from like huge uh, piece of aluminium, and all those uh, CNC machinated uh, uh, parts, which uh, which go on sides of case and so on and so on. When all it came together, it turned out to be very very expensive. A friend yeah. of mine who makes uh, all uh, all our um, module designs, uh, our instrument designs, I mean, from uh, how they look or mm -hmm. aesthetics, aesthetic wise. So she made um, she made a design for a case. Of course, we had some uh, argument. You know, maybe it does not look like a instrument case, but more like uh, some alien spaceship thing. <laughs> <laughs> but but anyway, we agreed that this is the way to go, and here we are. Now, but still, the the, the whole image on the the carbon case is of yeah, course yeah, yeah. it is that was her. It's modern. Idea. It's it, it's it's a yes, modern yes. look, and you can then say, well, it's it's sci-fi. It is X, Y, and Z. Mm. But then again, the technology that it that it secures is of course something that can take people anywhere whether yeah. you want and to have something yeah in, it's incredibly light <laughs> yeah absolutely no i'm just looking at this and, and as i said I'm, I'm recording all of the um all of the the, the the images and all the products that i'm looking into and then of course i'm, I'm currently looking at the images for the uh, black system 3 in that carbon fiber case mm. and that is well, what's not to love in that, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. And, yeah, the thing is we uh, we are running now a special uh, not promotion, but uh, we develop special offer that we have uh, 50 systems, um, uh, 25 systems, uh, techno systems and uh, black systems in carbon case at the same price as a regular case. You know? Oh, wow. And because, yeah, because we needed to facilitate sales of cases but uh, we cannot reduce the price of case itself because it's very costly to produce of course so, but when you get to a certain point when you get to a certain level of quantity then of course all of the, yeah, the, the, the upfront uh, investments then they yeah, they start to pay back of course yeah yeah and uh, you know if, if you buy a system then still we make some money on modules and uh, yeah of we course can yeah afford to give away a case awesome i'm just uh, i'll probably need something like a cloth because i'm drooling over these systems um <laughs> so let's see what 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 are the questions do we have here do we have anyone who's raised their hands yet not yet uh, my modular well, journey had uh, has raised hand but uh, oh but did, then did hand you? disappeared well, let me just to make sure that we uh invite to yes speak. here here here's the hand there you go hey 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 hi um yeah so my question about the uh, book was not so much on uh, building a module but more on um yeah learning more for uh for circuits in in general but i think later in the conversation you already stumbled on the uh on the mm -hmm. art of electronics so uh, so maybe this is the uh, the thing that i uh, hmm. i should pursue first yeah and uh, mm -hmm. also i highly recommend to check uh, music from outer space website uh, yeah. they, he has a uh, really beautiful schematics and there is a certain amount of explanation as well so if uh, if uh, you really want to understand uh, you know electronics behind schematics then uh, then um, then music from outer space also is a good place to look yeah yeah I, i've used that extensively and i used actually building the let's say your polyvox diy li uh, line checking those uh, 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 schematics also to learn and understand schematics but yeah, it's looking for the yeah more real basics in in electronics. I uh, I guess to uh, yeah to dive deeper and, and get away from yeah 
looking at recognizable subsections of uh, of schematics, which yeah, I I can do can recognize quite well, but yeah, diving mm -hmm. into something really new, if, mm -hmm. if yeah, if I make myself clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for uh, actually building so much of our uh, stuff. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really, really encouraging to, to come up with something new. <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, so yeah, got, that's mm. what got me into modular sense in uh, yeah in the in the first place. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. No worries. And then we've got uh, Kyle from Signal Sounds with a couple of uh, follow up questions on that as well. Um, Erica has one of the largest variety of instruments from any uh, Eurek manufacturer uh, analog, digital, tubes, drums, sequences, full desktop synths, and effects, etc. How do you decide what sort of modules to design next? And how do you find or develop the skills required to approach that next project? See, uh, we are uh, at the moment we are a team of nine who, who hmm. are like in house. And uh, Elise, uh, she's based in Berlin. She takes care about uh, our PR marketing and the artist relation things. Uh, then we have uh, two guys in uh, in customer support. Uh, they are not kind of directly involved into development, but they are uh, they are genius musicians and uh, they <laughs> use our instruments a lot and uh, they promote them a lot and um, and um, <clears throat> then we have like everybody in our team is involved into development in, uh, in terms of uh, contributing with uh, ideas with uh, criticism and so on uh, when we started a company and uh, the, our first uh, appearance in uh, public, let's say, it was uh, Music Mess 2014. And oh, wow. uh, my, as per my background in marketing, uh, I said, we need to, we need to buy a rack, a rack space, you know, meaning that, uh, that, you know, when you go to supermarket, there is, for instance, uh, toothpaste uh, stand and uh, for instance Colgate Palmolive occupies like 50 centimeters of the stand yeah and next to it is blender meds which occupies <laughs> like 55 centimeters you know and when uh, I used to work with both of those companies you know and when they are like in different times and when their CEO uh, occasionally comes to Latvia to check the local market, so he goes to do store checks, he literally takes a ruler and measures what's the shelf space. <laughs> <laughs> and says, well, no, our entire marketing effort should be to get shelf space five centimeters more than uh, that competitor. So when we started the company, I said, well, we have... In Latvia, we have uh, extremely good infrastructure for electronics manufacturing. We can yeah. do everything locally. We have like six factories which do outsource electronics manufacturing. We have we have um, factories that make cases which do um, silk screen and stuff. So, so let's buy a shelf space because uh, actually modular synthesizers, that's the same shelf in supermarket, just in your studio you know, and there is competition <laughs> for um, rack space so we developed uh, we developed like 10 black modules and presented them on Superboost and uh, on next uh, uh, not Superboost but Music Mess but yeah. the next uh, event was Superboost and then we presented 14 uh, Pico modules simultaneously uh, meaning that we really tried to have not only quality output but also quantity in order to make beautiful systems and when you put together like black system it's stunningly beautiful um, okay motorcycles are more beautiful for me visually but or aesthetically but 
but when it comes to modular yeah. synthesizers, you know, then I think uh, one of um, one of uh, reasons why people prefer one or other synthesizer or manufacturer is how the instrument looks and how it feels in action, you know, mm-hmm. the, the user interface. So, yeah, we to answer the question. When we started, we really put out a lot of modules. Nowadays, we try to figure out what is missing in our lineup to complete the system or to complete our offer. And uh, we are now more focusing on uh, standalone desktop instruments because uh, that makes your life complete. <laughs> Modular <laughs> synthesizers, they are kind of Frankenstein. In a good sense, they are Frankensteins. You can build a synthesizer specifically for your needs, combining modules from different manufacturers. And I really encourage yeah. this approach that, uh, that um, you really come up with a unique, one-of-kind instrument, which is tailored specifically for your needs you know yeah uh, when it comes to desktop instruments or standalone instruments then um, yeah, this is different story but but this is as a developer I feel like more complete when you when when you come up with uh, such an instrument yeah. but um, yeah. but yes so in Latvia we can make things and uh, we have uh, in our team we have people from different backgrounds so Mm -hmm. we can have uh, the most uh, pleasure uh, the most uh, let's say straightforward user interfaces instruments look beautiful and uh, when we consider developing something new we really look for uh, we have this uh, creative approach you know what's really missing you know not yeah. trying to emulate something new yes we began with um, polyvox filter and polyvox modules uh, and we gained some resources to develop a company into something bigger you know not only making making replicas mm-hmm. um, but um yeah but that overall I hope, journey. I hope I answered. Yeah, yeah, no, but but that overall journey when you started from from a polyvox filter, and one thing that I, I personally I truly have to applaud you and and the rest of the Erikson's family for is you have a ginormous offering of modules, of synthesizers, of capabilities, of enclosures, and all of that. Yeah, and but the one thing really is, it, it's <laughs> not it, even today. If I want to buy a Polyvox filter, I'm still able to do that. It's not something yeah. that you try to limit the availability of that. It's still there. I can still buy it. Yeah, we, we really, of course, we evaluate. Uh, we we discontinued several modules because yeah, of course, of yeah. possible no, because they they were not perfect by mechanical means for instance mm-hmm. or maybe they did not simply sell good enough so mm-hmm. we just uh, we just discontinued them but uh, but yes those who are our top sellers we maybe like polyvox filter we updated it we actually narrowed yeah. it to 10 hp initially it was 12 hp but uh, but yes it's still there it's um, even um, updated and stuff but uh, mm-hmm. yes yeah, but and, still, uh, uh, yeah it's all an evolutionary process right where you want to yeah. improve something yeah. but also say yeah. well this is not working we we scrap that why as opposed to other uh, manufacturers out there they say well i want to just create a very limited run of module x y and z yeah, but uh, you know, you invest a lot in uh, development. Yeah. You invest a lot in uh, promotion of that module, and and uh, you know, why would you make a limited run? And also, yeah, once again, on uh, on manufacturing, we can 
manufacture them and we now can afford to invest into stock. So we have a huge warehouse where, uh, where uh, if you order a module from LA, you can have it in three days, including shipping time. And these yeah. are, there are a lot of uh, cases when people really are surprised that uh, <laughs> it's so, so, so quick and so. And now, uh, and last week, I actually, coming back to manufacturing, manufacturing capabilities, I'm try, I'm helping to move uh, um, Elta music manufacturer. Uh, he's from Ukraine, so his business is. It's not possible to run uh, manufacturing anymore in uh, Ukraine and Russia because he had a yeah. uh, company in Ukraine, manuf modules, uh, instruments where Solar 50, for instance, was his most yeah. significant thing. Uh, that was manufactured in Russia, so that's not possible anymore. So uh, he is now making a company in uh, Latvia and I helped him to set up uh, all uh, processes uh, here so uh, soon there will be new Elta music instruments made in Latvia. I'm so happy to hear that because I've been in contact with him for a couple of months nice. already and of course yeah uh, things have gone silent because of course um, as I as I need to be I'm, I'm his, his, his lowest priority but I'm happy to hear that he's found a safe place. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, uh, give him my best uh, when you uh, when you talk to him. Absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's. Oh, I'm. I'm really. Oh, I'm. I'm honestly happy to hear that. Perfect. Um, then we've got a um, a question from uh, uh, Lapramit. Uh, any news on the Perkins release? Ooh, that's a hot take. Yes. Um, today we had uh, another development meeting, and uh, and uh, uh, we did a lot of updates uh, to to make it even better. But uh, the last one is we still have a bit of noise in analog filters, uh, which we're trying to sell uh, solve uh, by the next week. Oh, that, that if oh, we wow. if we succeed, then it goes yeah, to manufacturing course, yeah. uh, um, uh, next week. So um, yeah, awesome. Um, but we are determined to have a product uh, ready by uh, Superboost, which is uh, mid May. So yeah. because we cannot show a, a, a prototype of Perk ones there. <laughs> Not again. No, absolutely yeah, no. Yeah. But, uh, I think that the the feedback that we've got from the community is that everyone's looking forward to Perkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, I would love to have it uh, out, like right now. But but still, mm -hmm. we need to make it perfect. And uh, I do not make want to make compromises on that one. And we do not make pre-sale because you know then you are uh, like forced to do some compromises <laughs> yeah but uh, but yeah so as soon it will be will be will go to production we will make an announcement that uh, that um, yeah that's a case no but I think that that's as you said well uh, if you want to do anything like uh, a pre-purchase or a uh, pre-order those kind of things those put a a certain pressure on manufacturers as well and I, th there was a there was a British YouTuber uh, a couple of years back um, and this was specifically about computer games actually and one of his mantras was uh, we will not pre-order and the reasons why he said that is exactly what you just said well we don't want to put a additional pressure on you to release something that you as a manufacturer or a designer or how you want to to identify are not comfortable with because you need to be absolutely 100 percent supporting on the product that you release right so yeah, yeah. like uh, we 
just recently had this video game Cyberpunk, whatever. There, that Great, ex- like yeah, good example. Major yeah, failure, you know, just because it was actually it was launched not completed <laughs> which was quite a big thing for cd project red right because they mm-hmm. had they've had a a pretty good track record when it came to releasing well good products but yeah f- luckily enough uh cyberpunk 2077 was of course fixed but it took them several hot fixes be- before they actually came to a level where the rest of the community said, well, we this is now acceptable. So yeah, yeah. great example. And actually. that's the case when you have investors who push you and uh, and uh, if you are um, if you are uh, listed in stock market, you know, then that's all the pressure that, well, you need to make profits now and <laughs> and no, absolutely. Yeah, but uh, as we are independent company or privately owned company so we can make our own decisions and uh, and um, yeah we do not want to um we mm-hmm. can take risks in different areas but i do not like to take risks in uh, and nobody in company wants to take risks with in uh, when it comes to products well and of course yeah there's of course a, a time and place for taking um dumping in jumping into the deep end of the pool uh but the one thing you don't want to do you don't want to make the actual customers um pay for that of course i think as you said well sometimes you just need to see how deep the rabbit hole goes but those kind of experiments don't necessarily need to lead up to um release products sometimes you just need to dive into a deep end of something figure out well is this something that you can actually productize is this something that the community wants and if the answer is no well then no harm done and as you said as a privately owned company you have your flexibilities to do that you have the the option to invest into a investigation would this be something and then decide well this is not something we're going to continue on a different uh, on a different approach but of course when you have other uh, stakeholders uh, shareholders or anything like that or uh, venture capitalists who want to make sure every everything that you invest into needs to lead to something that we can sell then you leave then you, and you lose that bit of flexibility but also the the natural curiosity that we as human beings have yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, awesome. Um, so let me just double check because I'm I'm fully cognizant that it's almost we're past the uh, point of no return when it comes to your uh, time that you uh, will probably want to get some shut eye. Um, let's see. So we uh, we have another comment from Kyle from SignalWorks that explains why Erica takes up a whole row in the stockroom because of your abundance of of available gear that you have of course um everyone should have a polyfox filter i can only agree and no. talk, talking about cd project red well the witcher 4 is in the works as pointed out by kyle as well yo absolutely uh we have another uh, uh unique filter coming out in a couple of weeks so Ooh. um so that's uh, that's uh, another s- spoiler mm. for, uh, when it comes to Black Series modules. Yeah. Oh, so we'll need to uh, keep our keep our eyes on the uh, social media and the yeah. website in the cu- next couple of weeks. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I'm, I can only speak on my own behalf, but I'm really looking forward to that then, um, because well. Uh, in total disclosure to anyone who's listening um, the only exposure and experience I've got with Erica Sins modules is the graphic VCO and the black jewel VCF and both of them I love to pieces but I'm interested to see what else you guys have up your sleeves absolutely so with that being said I think that um, this is probably like 
as good as a point in time as any where uh, you, it's, I, I, I will have to thank you again for taking your time even though it's not your birthday congratulations again but taking your time out of your busy schedule um, talking to, to me to the wrestling community that is much appreciated um, let's make sure this is something that we can um, revisit in a couple of months again when we can talk about everything that has been going on with Erica since uh, at that point in time for now I would just again thank you so much for your time your honesty your answers but also your um, philosophical insights much appreciated thank you and uh, if you want to meet us in person then uh, we will be in super booth on uh, on uh, mid uh, may and absolutely uh, we are going to Detroit uh, and oh. May, where they have uh, this techno festival, and Sweetwater is setting up manufacturer booths there. So we will be in states as well. So Absolutely, more than welcome. that's great. Oh, perfect. Personally, I'm 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 hoping to be able to travel to Super Booth, so we'll meet you uh, meet you there, and of course next time I'm in Latvia, I'll make sure to. Uh, visit your offices as well yeah absolutely so we are actually starting construction of our uh, office building um, in a couple of weeks so oh nice next uh, early next year uh, we will have uh, a spectacular office with residency studio with performance room and so so yeah, everybody will be welcome to to pay a visit to um, stay at residency for a couple of weeks awesome have but is some, it still in the same area output. excuse me is it still going to be in the same well the the dock area where you are no, located no right that's now? that's different because uh entire place uh, in this dock area is being uh, demolished and uh, there will be some public uh public access um hmm. places some exhibitions and cafeterias and stuff um, oh uh, so where where will you and, new, uh, long, and, uh, new your uh, for let me kill Mister? Absolutely. So mm -hmm. the moment you guys start to uh, get a well uh, a fundraising start for that, let me know and I'll make sure to share that as well. But um, in regards to your no new offices, uh, whereabouts in Riga will you be uh, building that? If you already know and if you can share that, yeah, it, it's uh, just across the river from uh, from where we were. It's uh, on uh, on the island, so basically close to city center. And uh, so on those who or, have um, been in Riga, yeah. everything is almost walking distance there. <laughs> yeah. It's so is it more on, on Kipsala then, or? Yes, 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 Kipsala. Oh, exactly. okay. Oh, that's gonna be. So you're going to claim the whole island then, I'm assuming. <laughs> no, it's too posh place to claim everything. <laughs> oh, you guys are Erica since you can do that, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. No, but but great. Again, you get it. Um, thanks so much for your time. Um, I think that we ha we can spend hours on end just to uh, pick our brains. But for now, I would uh, probably let you uh, get some uh, shut eye. Thanks so much for joining, and everyone Thank else you, for having me. It's been it's been an honor and a pleasure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And for everyone who's joined uh, live, anyone uh, who's listening to this later on in the recording, this has been a presentation of the Modular Clubhouse. As always, um, make sure that you keep safe, keep healthy, and um, hope to see you for my next show. Talk to you then. Cheers. Bye bye. See you.